All right, everyone. Well, welcome back. We are going to be doing session two of the day using average true range to analyze entry and exit levels at Nadex. Uh, again, we've got one of our great partners joining us, Brian Caprice. Uh, Brian, thank you again so much for joining us today. I am going to make you the presenter right now. There you go. You are now the presenter. And uh, Brian, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you to let you do your thing. Thank you. Sure. And you guys can see the screen okay? Indeed we can. Okay, perfect, wonderful. Well, everybody, welcome to day two. Uh, I know I'm not the first speaker of today, but um, I always I always love these education summits. Um, you know, getting multiple days, seeing multiple speakers, many different opinions. Um, one thing is a, an educator that I learned um, a couple years ago and really kind of stuck with me is it, it doesn't matter what I teach an individual. I mean, if I give you a set of steps and, and rules and guidelines to follow, somebody will always kind of change it a little bit to make it their own, to own it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's why things like this where these education summits are, it, are just so powerful because one thing that Todd said may kind of ring true to you and it could be what sets the light bulb off for you or something that I said yesterday with technical analysis could be the light bulb that goes off finally that really helps push you to the edge to where you wanted to be you know so it's one of those things that these are just absolutely amazing opportunities and once again I'm very thankful to have been asked to be here so um, today's presentation is a little bit more advanced than what I had yesterday and when I say a little bit once again it's one of those things that in 45 minutes it's very difficult to get all the information in to truly master this and as I said this is something that I, I'm hoping that I can plant to see that you take this forward and again make it your own change it use it how you see fit um, I will say, and again, this is kind of my, you know, my disclaimer before I get started. Um, using ATR was something that um, throughout my years of trading, I've kind of used it, then not used it, then used it. Well, when I first started trading Nadex a few years ago, um, it, I was, I didn't, I, I, in all honesty, I, I, it was not an instantaneous success for me because I was a bit frustrated with the expirations. Um, what I found was a lot of times is um, I was, I was, you know, again, I was picking great targets. But unfortunately, that expiration was really getting me a lot of times. And when I really kind of dove back into my roots and started applying ATR to it, that's really kind of what made the big difference and, and, and really made Nadex click for me. Um, I was fine picking entries and, 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 and things like that. But, you know, I started with options way back in the day and um, had, you know, stepped away from it to trade other things. And that was the biggest kind of learning thing for me. So when I applied ATR back to it, it made a big kind of big change for me. And um, that's kind of where this entire presentation mentality, and now it's something that really across the board in all my trading I'm using. So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover mastering ATR um, to select higher probability than Nadex strikes. Uh, as you guys know, we obviously have disclaimers, so let me cover the disclaimer for my, my portion. Uh, trading on Nadex involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Trading can be volatile and investors risk losing their cost to end of the transaction, including fees. Now, the information presented here within this presentation is for information and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument or Nadex or elsewhere. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results and Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes including Forex, stock index futures and commodity futures. If you remember the presentation yesterday, what did I tell you was the big secret? A chart is a chart is a chart and that goes directly with this disclaimer. Doesn't matter if it's Forex, Stock Index Futures, Commodity Futures. Nadex is a registered trademark of the IG Group. All right, so just to give you guys a little bit of a rundown, because I, I think it's always important. Yesterday was just about fundamental, or about technical analysis and you know, in comparison to fundamentals and things. So just so you have an understanding of where I'm kind of pulling my principles and kind of the experience behind the principles and kind of, you know, really, where am I coming from? Why would I be considered an expert in this field? So I started trading back in the tech bubble, much like many of you did, um, not back in the tech bubble, but I started trading as a retail trader. Um, we didn't have really YouTube back then, but I would get books and seminars and workshops and I bought classes and things like that and and, and kind of went down and kind of a mentality of, uh, you know, trusting, you know, oh, if I do X, Y, and Z, I'll make money. If I do X, Y, Z, I'll make money. And I was just not finding success. Um, and again, what I realized was that there was no perfect cookie cutter situation out there that you kind of had, again, you had to be able to make this your own. Um, over the years, I, again, I started with stocks and traditional options. Um, again. Which obviously, you know, with my age, I was, you know, my dad works for IBM. So I, I was very good with technology. So when we started to get more charting and I really, really embraced that and found currencies, 
um, ended up going around and working for a company, traveling around, helping teach people how to trade, it, you know, extended my skills even more, became friends with market makers and, and really kind of learned what they did Was a financial advisor. I was able to see it from the inside. So I have a pretty diverse background, but technology and technical analysis has always been one of those things that I've been very fascinated with. I've created a number of programs, as I mentioned, if you guys see my you know, other presentations, 30-minute um, trader, five-minute binary courses. I have weekly breakdowns. I have a high volatility trading course that is Nadex based now. So I do actually spend a lot of time looking at Nadex setups, Nadex charts, and trying to figure out and incorporate kind of what I do on the outside and you know, particularly my currency and wealth trading. And how do I incorporate Nadex into that? Um, and again, it's kind of combining multiple strategies, using my skills and knowledge from those other fields and bringing them over here and, and again, combining them. So um, that's why I've been asked to kind of do these presentations. And, and again, that's, that's, that's kind of my background and again, why I think we should be focusing on ATR. So today's agenda, what I'm gonna cover is first off, what is ATR? You've probably heard it before. You may have seen it on a chart, but in all honesty, many people don't pay attention to it. And there's a lot of people out there that would say that ATR is probably the most, not only underused, but most important indicator for lack of a better term that you could potentially use, okay? And I'll explain kind of why. Uh, then, most importantly, what practical purpose does it serve a Nadex trader, right? If we're trading on Nadex, how can it help you guys now, right? Todd just kind of broke down some charts and then how to apply indicators. And, and you know, yesterday, you know, they dove into binaries and, and knockouts. I'm actually gonna mention call spreads today too. Unfortunately, in two days, they weren't able to get a, a session on call spreads, maybe next time. But after that, uh, well, I'm going to go into kind of matching time frames to strikes. You guys remember yesterday I talked about multiple time frame analysis. I'm going to mention kind of why it's important, and I'm going to go to probably one of the little used pages in on the Nadex webpage, um, the contract specifications page. Many of you may not have any clue where it's even at, why you would use it, but I'm going to kind of break down how I use that, how I match ATR, and again, how I'm able to use kind of something different than just the daily binary or just a regular knockout or crawl spread, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about considerations that you need to make with binary setups, considerations for call spreads, as well as considerations for knockouts, okay? So hopefully everybody's on board and you guys are ready to go. And again, this is one of those sessions where if you guys wanna take screenshots, you're more than welcome. They are gonna be recorded. Um, write some notes. I actually had a couple of people email me yesterday for clarifications on things, and I'm absolutely 100% willing to do that. I'll show you that at the very, very end, okay? So. First things first, what is average true range or ATR? Let's dive into the definitions and kind of where did this come from? So ATR is not something that's brand new, okay? It's actually almost as old as me, almost. I was actually a bicentennial baby. This was actually written in a book uh, called New Concepts in Technical Trading Systems by J. Wells Wilder. Now, you may not know his name, you may not actually even know this book, but I can guarantee you know a lot of the stuff that this gentleman invented. So he was really one of the kind of the first godfathers, for lack of a better word, of technical analysis, okay? He is the gentleman who created RSI, average true range, parabolic SAR, average directional indexes, and many other, other indicators that are used currently today, okay? This book was first published in 1978. Every time I see that, it just absolutely floors me that he was able to create these systems. Now remember, Back then, I mean, think about it. If, if there's any, you know, people, again, I don't remember what I was born, what the technology was like, but I know that we had rotary phones. There was no such thing as the internet. There was no dial up. People did not have computers at home. And, you know, again, if you had more than one color TV in your house, you were considered that you were doing pretty well. So this gentleman created these concepts and these technical indicators. And again, originally they were based off of the commodities market because that's really kind of what floor trading was really about, was about commodities and things. Um, created these tools. And now these are a lot of the catchphrases that these professionals, you know, out there, you know, oh, you've got to use RSI compared with Fibonacci. Again, these things were created back in the 70s, but they still work today. And that's why they're absolutely amazing. And again, this goes back to kind of keeping things on a simple kind of basic fundamental basis. That's why they're so important. And that's why they still work. So average true range or ATR, you know, I'll just call it ATR going forward, is basically what it does is it takes the average range or what's called the true range right? It's actually a more sophisticated version of that, okay, um, of market movement. Now, remember yesterday we talked about candles, right? We talked about there's the open, low, high, and close. And what it does is it's going to take those and it's going to kind of give you an average move over a specific period of time, okay? Now, there's a couple of different ways that it actually calculates that high to low. And this is where it gets to be a little bit more sophisticated. Now, there's no test at the end, but I just want you guys to fully understand what this is trying to show, right? There's three options. The first one is it takes the high minus the low range of the current candle or the current day or current five minutes 
for whatever time frame you're looking on. Okay, ATR is not based off an individual time frame. It works on all time frames, all volumes, all share bar charts, it works on all charts. Okay, so number one is whatever we are currently, it takes the high and the low. Okay, or or it takes the high of today versus the previous close of yesterday. Or option number three, the previous close my, the previous close minus the low today. And the reason why they're doing these is very simply, it's got to account for gaps, okay? Gaps are something, again, you guys know what gaps are, right? Where the price closes at one price, and then the next day it's not opening right at that price again. It's where they're gapping higher or lower. This entire strategy is um, made off of gaps. Um, one of my favorite in my weekly newsletter is our Sunday night gaps, right? Gaps are a big thing, and the indicators have a very hard time because they are looking for actual fixed data. Here's price A, here's price B. Well, how do I how do I compute the data? Wait, 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 what happened here, right? Because again, remember, computers don't make mistakes. There's no rounding. There's no kind of gut feelings in the computer. It's just it, it's it's black or white, right? So a gap a lot of times throws things off because let's look at for continuation. So average to range is actually is and again, it's the the greater of any of those three options. Okay, now once you have that range figured out, then what it does, the next calculation is it takes the average of that total typically over 14 days or 14 periods. And what it does is it either does a simple moving average, an exponential moving average, or a smoothing. Remember yesterday when we talked about, again, the you know the three different types of candles, there was the Japanese candlestick, there was the bar, and then there was the smoothing that only takes the closing price. It's kind of the same idea. Um, I'm not sure if any of the guys talked about kind of moving averages yet, but there are two different types of moving averages with simple and exponential. The only difference, and if they happen, exponential just means it high it higher weights the current values versus the old ones. So, like if it takes a 14 day exponential ATR average, day 14 or the closest one to what's happening right now has a higher weighting than the range 14 days ago, and it's a way to get more in touch with current kind of like current events versus just taping, you know, a simple moving average, right? Simple moving average, you know, over 14 days, they just take all 14 days, add them up, divide it by 14, and bam, there's your figure. It plots it on a graph, okay? Exponential, obviously, is a little bit more advanced. Smoothing is, again, many people don't use option number three. They don't use that smoothing. Um, I would say that option one and option two are probably the most, probably the most used. And again, it just depends on if you're going to use larger time frames or smaller. Typically, smaller time frames will use option number two. Now, one of the nice things about ATR is pretty much every single platform out there has it because it's something that's very, very easy to figure out. Okay. Is it the fanciest? No, but it does tell you a lot of valuable information. Okay. But this is how the ATR is created. So if anybody ever asks you, you can tell them how do you, you know how do you figure out ATR? It's the greatest range of or the today's candle. Today compared to where yesterday closed or today's closing versus yesterday. And then they take a moving average of it. So then when you talk to somebody, they're going to be like, wow, you know so much about this. It's just basically averages, guys. That's all it is. Okay. Now there's many limitations to it as well. Okay. ATR is a subjective value and that does not tell you if price is about to reverse or continue moving forward. It can be used to some extent to kind of get a reading on trend strength or weakness by comparing it to like a historical value. Right. I mean, think about it. If it's at the bottom of a chart, you can look back into the past and see what ATR was during a specific period of time. It doesn't tell you if things are going to change, but it can be kind of used to determine strength and weakness versus the past. Now, remember, past performance is not indicative of a, a future events, but but it does give us kind of an idea, a little bit of a buffer of what happens during those time frames. Now, remember, ATR only measures volatility, it does not measure direction. OK, I'm saying this for a reason. Okay. A lot of people will say, well, listen, the ATR is going up. That means it's going to continue moving. No, maybe. It just means that it's getting more and more momentum. It's a, it's a volatility indicator. Think about what we just had over the last few months. Okay. If you were trading the market, how volatile were the markets over the last few months? And what would you use as a gauge for volatility? Okay. If any of you guys ever read the, uh, the, the many emails that Nadex sends out, particularly about notices, they had to they had to expand some of the strikes of some of the contracts. And the reason why was because the volatility was off the charts. Why? Well, obviously COVID-19. I mean, we've never, you know, this generation has never seen something this severe before. But prices were absolutely crazy. Okay, an example, obviously, for currencies for me, there was things that would typically move. And again, you don't have to know what a PIP is, but it's the smallest increment of movement in currencies. You had things that were moving an average of, I don't know, 45 to 55, right? 
that's average. All of a sudden, you were getting ATR values during kind of the whole crash from March 6 down. That same one that was 45 to 55 was moving 250 pips in one day. And that was kind of average for about two, three weeks. So what you can use, you can use ATR to determine the level of volatility currently in the markets. Now, why is that important? ATR is important because if you know what the level of volatility is right now, you know what the potential movement in price is to determine whether or not a Nadex contract is a good one or a bad one to get into. If we are in a very low volatility market, the ATRs are low, but yet you're in something that has very wide strike prices in your binaries or even, or, you know, even call spreads, right? Are they probably a good place to be? And the answer is no. But do we have other options? Absolutely. Nadex has been great. They give us many different strike durations. And again, a lot of people don't look at these, but look at a two hour binary versus, and again, I'm going to show you these a bit. Look at a two hour binary versus a daily binary. How far are the strike differentials? Well, if we are in more of a lower volatility time frame, you may be able to, to play like a two hour binary inside of the time when it's going to be the most volatile during the day, but then the whole rest of the time don't have your money at risk waiting for things to move when most likely it's not gonna move. So you see how ATR is very, it, it, again, this is one of the biggest benefits, using ATR to measure volatility to understand whether or not it's a good time to be trading or not. There are days, guys, uh, and again, this morning is kind of an example, early morning, I actually showed in, in my forum that the 24 hour change over all the currencies was extremely low. It was like one, I'd say it's probably like 20% of what the actual moves are. Now, after the U.S. data has come in, the market has finally started to move. But early morning today was not a great day to trade. Had you put a lot of contracts on this morning, you had almost no movement. That's where you, you, know, you kind of want to avoid those times and wait till the market is moving. You know, And again, a lot of that, you know, when news releases is going to come out, et cetera. And I'll cover that in a bit. All right. So big question is, how do I apply ATR to Nadex? Again, it was created for commodities, gold, oil, silver, orange juice, pork bellies. We can't trade pork bellies over at Nadex, right? I love bacon, but I can't, I can't trade pork bellies at Nadex, right? No, but again, it's a tool used to define buying and selling and understanding where moves. So again, a chart is a chart is a chart. It doesn't necessarily matter. So let's go in and talk about the three biggest focuses that you need to worry about when you're trading Nadex. And again, this is options in general, but in particular Nadex. Okay, I didn't say the biggest focus items for binaries or knockouts or call spread, this is all of Nadex because they are all options, you need to focus on these three things, all right? And this is kind of where ATR kind of, kind of focuses back, right? First one is price, okay? When you're placing uh, you know, trades on Nadex, you need to focus on, will I have enough time for price to move as far as it needs to move to get me into profit, right? So price is always extremely important when you're trading Nadex. Number two is risk. Is my level of risk appropriate for the selected vehicle? You guys know the benefits now. You guys are pros, right? You guys went through the, the presentations yesterday. A binary is, it's either yes or no. It's zero or 100. Is my risk appropriate? Am I going to make enough based off of this? And then again, apply that back to number three. Do I have enough time before expiration for that to happen? So these are three things. Again, write yourself a list. Post-it note, right? Is my price good? Is it gonna, you know, where do I need price to move in that time? Is my risk, am I taking enough risk to make money, but am I risking too much to make that same amount? And number three, do I have enough time to get there, right? Those are the three biggest concerns and ATR actually helps with all three of those, okay? ATR for projecting, okay? This is kind of the first one, all right? Now, understanding what the average movement can potentially look like helps in selecting the appropriate target. You may say, hey, listen, I love this setup. It's coming back to a 61.8 on Fibonacci. I absolutely love this short, but you're two hours before the end of that, you know, that contract closes. Do you have enough time before that contract expires worthless to get that full move in? And that's one of the things that when I, and again, I don't mind sharing my own personal stories. Hopefully you guys can learn from them. When I first started trading Nadex, this was my biggest problem in trading Nadex. It moved where I wanted it to go, it just didn't do it within the allotted time, okay? So when I started applying ATR for projecting, it helped a lot more, okay? So here's a, an example of a chart. And again, this chart is courtesy of IG, right? Again, this is a currency chart because I, I think they do a, a really, they do a, a bang up job. They do a wonderful job with charting and it's very user-friendly. It's very simple to look at. 
But here at 10 o'clock in the morning, you can see the ATR. And again, ATR will typically show at the, at the bottom, kind of in this histogram format where you can kind of see it going back and forth. And remember, I said it's a gauge of volatility, right? Not direction. As you can see, the price is moving down and then back up. And you've got these peaks, right? Peak Valley, Peak Valley, Peak Valley at the bottom. And that's on a 14 period ATR. Well, you can see the dotted line. I'm looking at it right there. You can see that the ATR at that time is 26 pips. So it is reasonable to believe that at that time, we can see 26 pips worth of movement, okay? If I'm setting up a trade and I say, hey, listen, I need this trade to move 40 pips. Is that a reasonable assumption at that time, at 10 o'clock in the morning, that I'm going to see at 10 o'clock a 40 pip movement? And the answer is no. Could it happen? Absolutely, absolutely. But does it have a high probability of happening? Answer is no, okay? Remember, you can't play or you can't trade basing everything off the exception to the rule. You have to base everything off of what does average look like or what does even below average look like, okay? So there's many things that can be you know, viewed from this. Now, big question I have for you guys, right? How many people have ever put ATR on a chart when they were putting a binary contract on saying, hey, listen, in the next 24 hours, my price, or you know, Next two hours, this binary's got two hours left in it. It should move about 12, you know, 12 points or $12, but I need this to move 25. This is probably not a good idea. Answer is probably not very many of you, right? And again, that's what the, that's the assumptions that I was making. It will move, and, and it did. It just did it after the expiration happened. So it's important to understand and get this kind of projection of saying, listen, what does the average move look like? Or maybe what does 60% of the move look like? And here's a little secret. It's not in the in the in the um, in the charts here. But one of my favorite styles of news trading, particularly with Nadex, is news trading. Okay, for any of you guys that know me, I did the webinars last fall about parabolic retracements. What do you think I base my parabolic retracement strategy off of? ATR. I went back and looked at an entire year worth of movement, took the average move off of news, and then created a strategy that I was able to apply to Nadex for that specific reason. And what was I doing? I was looking at the average responses to missed news releases. I was able to go back and historically look at this and figure out, okay, are my price projections making sense based off of ATR for an entire year verse of data? And that's where the strategy came from. So that's how powerful ATR for projections can be. Now, projections and profit targets are great, but number one always is going to be risk, okay? Using ATR for risk, you got to ask yourself, is price likely to continue in the same direction or beyond my entry or knockout? Risk is extremely important. And I'll tell you, when I first saw knockout brackets, my biggest problem with them was the fact that I had the knockout on the downside. Now, I understand, again, there are, best, there are definitely benefits to having both sides to that. And at first, that was my biggest reaction is I absolutely love binaries. The price can go against me. It can whipsaw, but I can't get slapped out. And again, that's why I really like call spreads as well. And I was always concerned. And again, using ATR to uncover these things, knockouts are nice. I'm telling you right now, you know, my initial kind of response to it was wrong. And I'm, I'm a grown adult. I'm fully willing to admit that I was wrong, that my reluctance to actually get in there because they are so many different things because of the proximity to price. It is such a great vehicle to trade, but you have to be able to apply proper risk because look at this situation. Price is just pulled all the way back into a level that I like to buy. And what if I had a touch bracket sitting down here just around the uh, 2812 range, right? If I was to get into this trade, do I have appropriate risk? And what you would do in something like this is, again, I know within a two hour time period, what type of move is average, right? And what it does is it's taking the highs and lows and everything. And this was an, an irregular move. This was the exception to the rule that price pulled back in such a fast amount of time into a level, okay? I also know that within that specific time, I know what the retracement looks like, but I also can say, listen, it's already moved that much. We're outside of the norm. It typically is going to pull back. And how much more after the actual news move, what does the ATR look like? And what you do is you apply that to something like this with risk. And this is a situation where if you were able to put a knockout in here, I knew that it was going to, if it was going to continue to move against me, I knew how much farther most likely it could move. Now, is it guaranteed? No, absolutely. Again, there's no guarantees in trading. But I knew what was outside of the norm. I knew what the normal movement during this time period was supposed to look like. And you know, price was set off. I know there was an emotional response and I was able to match that up and use that with a knockout. And again, it was able to move two or three times. Now, once you're taking your risk as well, you can say, hey, listen, 
you know, again, this is one of the biggest advantages for a knockout is the fact that I was able to establish the risk. I can see where my one to three and my one to five risk to reward ratios were in that same time frame. Again, before the expiration, I'm not telling you what day this is. Do I have enough time for this to fully retrace to hit my one to three risk of reward at a minimum? Because that's kind of my rule is I only take things that I can get a minimum of one to three out of. Do I have enough time? Does the risk in this justify, again, the profit target? And again, do I have the risk level that I need? Okay, so again, I'm looking for projections. Can it hit there? Will it hit with inside of that risk? And then again, time. Time is, is, is number three. So ATR for time is based off the average move during this time period. Is there enough time left for the target to be hit? When the target has to be good, uh, is it gonna run into other things? And again, time gets a little bit more difficult, right? So here's an example. I've just figured the easiest way to look at this is to show you the actual options chain itself uh, and give you kind of almost uh, kind of like a mini case example, right? So with 31 minutes remaining, is there enough time to reach my strike? Is the big question that we have. Excuse me. All right. So this is the Wall Street 30. You guys have seen this one. This one is ending at 12 p.m. So this is obviously a shorter time or shorter duration binary, right? As you can see right now, the indicative value is about 24,572. Okay, the at the money is very, very easy to see. You can see it's 49 to 50, 5175, right? Um, it's what, five points off? You know, the indicative value is, um, yeah, with the indicative value being at 72, this one is, uh, you know, the at the money is the one right in the middle, the third one from the top, the 245.77. Okay, so with 31 minutes left, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys the ATR during this time period is six pips. That's the five minute ATR. Okay, this is why am I looking at a five minute ATR? I'll tell you that in the next slide, but um, looking at a small two minute binary. So I know that the next strike price higher based off of the strike differential on the left hand side is 48 pips. And if I'm losing anybody here, again, this will there will be a recording. You can shoot me messages about it. Again, we'll make sure you understand it. But I can look at the strike differential. What do I mean by that? What is the difference from strike one to strike two to strike three to strike four to strike five? It's 48 pips. Okay. Right now, if I wanted to buy that second option, that 24,625, right? That is currently about, what, 50, 50 pips away, right? I have 31 minutes left. I have basically six candles to go. Six times the ATR of six is 36, right? So I have to look at this and say, okay, this is where we come into the risk factor of it and say, my risk right now, if I if I if it is an area where I think that we are in a strong buying area, right? I love all the probabilities into this. It's sixteen dollars and seventy five cents. I I could take the fifty one dollar and seventy five cent binary and say, hey, listen, I want to buy that one right now. We are already technically in the money. If it does absolutely nothing at all for thirty one minutes, bam, I can bank my forty nine dollars, right? Forty eight twenty five guys, but you guys get it, right? I, I I can bank that full amount, right? Because the indicative value is 24,572, right? I'm in the money. But what happens if it goes down just a couple points? I'm losing $51. It's kind of a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. And I know by simple math that if I'm only right, you know, one out of every one time or one out of every two times, 50%, I need to be right more than I'm wrong, right? That's a lot of pressure there, right? But what if I look at the one higher, okay? I believe that there is buying. I believe that it can go up 20, 30 pips. It'll cost me $16.75. Now, maybe, again, it depends on what the chart looks like. It depends what other, you know, other factors are sitting there. But could I get in at $16 value, um, you know, and, and risk? And if I'm if I'm wrong, it does nothing during that time, I lose $16.75, which is much better than the $51.75. I know on average, this is going to move about, you know, about 30 points higher. Um, you know, actually 36 points higher. I needed to move 48. If I move 48, then it would bring us all the way to 50. You know, so it's kind of one of these things you need to weigh to make, you know, you, you need to weigh your options here. I mean, just say it moved 25, right? 25 in the next, you know, certain amount of time. Is that $16 going to change? And the answer is yes, it's going to go up a bit as it gets closer. But there's going to be a time factor that gets sucked out as well. So again, this kind of goes back. Now, if this was the ATR and the average was 10 and it was going to, you know, it could on average, right, on average move 60 points and I only needed it to move 48. Does that make this a little bit juicier of a trade, right? Does that stack the odds in my favor? Now, I could hold it to expiration. I don't have to hold it to expiration. Again, I'm sure they went over that in binaries. If I risk $16.75 and say I just I just took this off when it got close to the indicative value, when it was closer to that 
you know, where we are right now with the $49 bid, if I risked $16.75 and I took it off at $45, did I, did I make good profit on that? Did I have a good risk reward ratio? Sure. But you always have to go back to the ATR. Is there enough time till expiration before that's able to hit? So that's, that's again, that's how I'm using it for price projections. I'm using it for time um, as well as risk. Okay, you got to take all these factors and it's a couple of things. And again, this is why it's kind of one of those, you know, you have to make this your own. Okay, you need to make sure that your levels are good and everything else. Now, biggest question again that I think a lot of people is going to have is how do I match the time frames of the correct strikes? How do I know which ATR to be able to use? Okay, four main things you have to focus on here. First is duration, right? When will your contract expire? How much time do you have from now till then? Okay, when is the market going to close? Because markets close at different times. Um, you know, a question I get a lot with currencies is like, well, what do you mean market closes? It doesn't close. Well, it doesn't, but there are different kind of times of the day that make sense, right? Obviously, the biggest kind of volatility and things like that happen between the European session and the U.S. session, but the European session closes and, and U.S. traders are off for the races, right? So again, you got to focus on our markets, but other markets as well. Um, is our pothole in there? And what I mean by pothole, I don't know, is, is you know, is there somebody talking? Is Powell going to speak? Is Trump going to speak? Um, is Warren Buffett going to get in there and mention that he's getting short? Oh, he's going to get flat. He's going to sell all of his positions in the stock market because he thinks it's going to continue to go down. I mean, what type of potholes are going to exist? What could happen from now till then? Not later in the day, but based off the duration of your strike. So what you do is based off the duration, you typically want to focus on a lower time frame. Okay, if you have three hours to go, you could focus on an hourly and figure out, well, how much can it move in one hour? And that's great, but remember, it's over 14 periods. It's not going to be really in touch with reality. What I would use as a simple rule is use a six times multiplier. Okay, if you have hours to go, I'd focus on five minute or 10 minute charts. If you have an entire day, like you got this and it's a daily contract, yeah, you could focus on hourly to get kind of a, you know, get in more touch with, you know, how much time is remaining. If it's a, a knockout that you're taking on, say, Monday, you have five days to go maybe jump up to like four hour charts, right? Kind of get an idea of what could this look like over the next few days, but maybe even sprinkle in some hourly charts as well, okay? Now remember, Nidex doesn't have anything longer than a week, so you know it's not like we're talking about just using just daily charts, okay? Now, risk to reward, okay? Is the target within or greater than the ATR, okay? What I like to do a lot of times is I will figure out what the average move, multiply the average ATR versus the number of kind of you know things in that time frame and figure out and use maybe 60% of what the ATR is. It's better to be conservative than overly aggressive and miss your target by a little bit, right? If it can move 36 pips, let's cut that down to 30. If it can typically move 150 points that day, right, in that, in that time frame, let's use 100, 125, right? Always, and as they, they always say, under promise, over deliver, okay? So cut that ATR down a little bit just to be on the more conservative side and make sure that it makes sense risk to reward wise. Does it have the ability to move? Is the risk there? Could you get the risk lower? Number three is proximity. Okay, proximity is important because how close to you are, how close are you to break even, right? Remember binary is zero or 100, it's nothing. Call spread, call spread is good, right? Because if it closes, you can make part of the money, right? Not maybe the full amount if it doesn't go past, right? So it's important to understand how close to proximity are you and then knock out Knockout is like the ultimate proximity tool. Why? Because as price moves up and down, it takes out the knockout brackets on one of the two sides and reprints another one. So, it, it, you know, again, it, proximity is important for me because, again, knockouts are literally right there. Okay. But, but we also need to focus and figure out are we within range? And here's why this is also important. This kind of goes into risk as well. All right. If your proximity is too close to a floor, or basically to a floor, or, you know, floor or ceiling, depending if you're going long or short there's going to be a certain amount of whipsaw with news related you know events so if you're getting close to news and you want to trade news and you're having an acceptable risk what does the average amount of whipsaw look like well you can take an atr reading on that okay again that would be a historical reading check to make sure if it whips higher that your proximity is not too close okay now how do you match that to a time frame drop that sucker down to like a five minute time frame it's for news i typically for proximity reasons i typically use 30 and five minute as far as determining the atr on there um use those those lower values okay sometimes again sometimes i actually do like five minute trades i do like the 20 minute binaries as well i will actually drop down into the one minutes okay one minute atr seems kind of crazy because one candle could throw it off 
But the nice thing is because you can kind of look at it over a range, kind of get a basic idea, um, it'll kind of tell you what the volatility is that early in the morning or at night or depending on when you're gonna trade. So that, that kind of helps as well, but you gotta go smaller for proximity. So for duration risk, a little bit higher proximity, go really, really low. Trend state is also important. Understanding what, what stage are we in? Remember yesterday I talked about the market moves in two directions, impulse or correction. Okay, with impulse or correction, understand what does an impulse ATR look like? What does a correction ATR look like? You see how this is getting more advanced, guys, than just what's the average move during that time? You know, if you ever heard people talk about like Elliott Wave, like what phase are we in? You know, is it one? Is it two? Is it three? The number, number three is the biggest and four and six. Yeah, it gets kind of crazy, right? It's very easy to determine whether market's in an impulse or a corrective move. The impulses are going to be bigger. The corrective moves are typically not as much, right? So understand, what is the ATR on this impulse? Am I shorting? Did it pull back? Okay, great. What is the ATR for this next impulse? What does it potentially look like? And use that for your targeting, your risk level, and everything else. So again, that's going to be more of also a lower time frame thing. So if you're looking at two-hour binaries, right? Great. Two-hour binaries, pull your ATRs off five minutes. If you're looking at dailies, you can use 30 minutes or hours. Okay, if you're using five minute, you're looking at one minute. And again, it's a combination of all four of these tools. 20 minutes, I would also use one, two. Natix kind of is cool because they have the, the tick, the one, two, three, um, and fives. Use those lower ones. Those are the ones that matter the most. But again, look, it says, okay, you know what? What did this last impulse look like? What was the average move or, during the last impulse? Okay, great, I got that. Okay, well, we're approaching, you know, we're in the corrective phase right now. I'm about to go short. I pulled back. I'm getting it a little bit cheaper. What is the average move? What does it look like? Let me multiply it. And again, there's many steps in this process. Um, again, a little bit more advanced, right? So let's talk about the considerations here. So when you're trading binary, uh, binary options, the top three things you need to remember as far as using ATR is one, how much time till expiration? It's vitally important. And again, this is very, I use ATR for this all the time. How much time do I have left and how much can it potentially move in that time frame? Because remember, if I didn't set the trade up correct, you know, with the risk of reward, I have to hold it till expiration to kind of have that, you know, the risk of reward make sense. Nothing worse than missing it by just a few, like few little points, right? Vitally important, okay? Um, on smaller duration binaries, use a similar time frame. I already talked about that. If you're using five minutes, use one. If you're using a two hour, again, small time frames. Don't take a daily ATR and focus on a 20 minute binary or a two hour binary. It just doesn't make any sense. So again, you always wanna go low, be on the more conservative side. It's a little bit more math, a little bit more that you have to look at. But again, one of the biggest mistakes here if you're using you know, ATR to predict what a move looks like is you're using high volatility data in a lower volatility time frame, and that's where you kind of run into errors, right? Um, also, when you're using binaries, make sure that news is a big, you know, news is always a big, you know, as I said, pothole. It has positive and negative benefits. What you can do is you can go back. Obviously, historically, it's always easy. I mean, there are certain things, you know, non-farm payroll is always the same time. Unemployment's always the same time. Oil is more or less always Wednesdays, but sometimes it adjusts to a Friday. I'm sorry, a, a Thursday, like this week. Um, you can go back and see when kind of major news releases happen. Um, during COVID-19, Trump was typically speaking between 5 and 5.30 at night. Now, Nadix was closed during that time period, but what he said rippled into all the overnight trades. All, you know, the, the charts, he would say something, and the market would basically start reacting from the time he said it till the open the next morning. Okay, so understanding kind of what the ATR looks like during specific news events matters, particularly for binaries, okay? But again, I'd say the biggest thing, if you could remember one of these three, focus on the time till expiration, okay? Here's an example, small case study of binary options using the S&P 500. As you guys can see, this is what you need to look at. So if you guys have never looked at contract specifications, you go up on the Nadex website, go look at products. You would click markets, actually. I'm sorry. Go to markets, choose stock indices, Forex, commodities. At the very bottom of the page, you'll see contract specifications. And what I mean by this and why I look at this is, you can see that there are 20 minute binaries up here. You can see what the strike width looks like, 0.75, and that's exactly what I need to match up to. If this is how far apart they are, do I have enough time to overcome one or two or three binaries? As you can see in intraday, right? The intraday two hours, the 10 to 12, the 11, the 12, the ones, they have a 1.5 strike differential. Okay, if I know that the average ATR during that time is three, and the two hour binaries are showing me that, hey, listen, the average strike width is 1.5 and there is 15 of them. That will also help me pick the proper targets. 
right? Or targets that offer a better risk to reward ratio. Okay, same thing with dailies. You guys all know about dailies, they end at 415. The strike width is six. Well, if I know in a typical day it moves 13, that's about two to two and a half strike differential on a normal day. That helps to determine how close to at the money I need to be. Okay, now call spreads. Call spreads, we don't talk about them as much anymore. Buying or the uh, knockouts have pretty much kind of pushed them to the side. They are still valid. I like them for news better than I like knockouts. Um, but things you need to focus on here when you're when you're dealing with call spreads is overcoming both time and an intrinsic value. Okay. Um, in my eyes, when they're at kind of a similar placement on the chart, they tend to have a little bit more premium baked into them. That intrinsic uh, that intrinsic premium. Um, you got to be a little bit careful about that. So focus on that again. When they do expire, they do have a value at the end. It's not just zero or 100. So you need to focus on that. How much can it move? One kind of, again, closing earlier, holding is also something to focus on and proximity to the floor or ceiling, kind of like knockouts as well. The closer you can get it, I actually, I actually really do like slightly out of the money call spreads. Why? Because what it does is it lowers that intrinsic premium to nothing. So it's just a time premium. And that's something that you cannot do with knockouts. So if you get a big, gigantic spike to the downside, you're okay. But And again, it goes all the way down. And then again, just close it early. It doesn't have that knockout feature. But if it whipsaws back before it goes down, it also protects me for news. So that's why I'm not necessarily opposed to using call spreads for, um, for news releases. But what do I do? I match my ATR, look to say, okay, this news has a potential to move $30 in this time frame. Um, does it make sense? What's the, uh, you know, what's the premium in there? Again, news is always going to put bake a little bit more premium in, and that's what you need to focus on for call spreads. Okay. Kind of the same idea. What does that look like? Well, here you go. There are five contracts of each. I know that the two hours on the S and P 500, and again, you can find this on Forex commodities, anything that Nadex has, right? They're going to have these contract specifications, range of 10, range of 30, range of 40, range of 80, right? It's nice to know those and know what the average move looks like. And again, I don't want to just use a daily ATR on one of these daily contracts. And that would be nice. I can say, hey, listen, it, it, it moves 50. All right. It moves 50 or it moves 100 and, you know, 110. Okay, great. That's two. But you also have to match this back up. We're not robots. Okay, we're at an all-time high. We just had a huge day to the downside. Okay, so what does a retracement look like? Right? Those are, the, those are kind of the other factors. And again, drop those down to the hourlies. And again, you can use four hours and things like that for the dailies. But like a two hour, absolutely without a doubt. I want to know what does the five minute ATR look like on a normal morning during the same exact time? How much movement can I have? And if you want to go up one level, what are the news releases today? Okay, great. The last time we have news releases, what was the ATR during that time frame? Okay, what type of responses do we have? Want to take it one step even higher? Last time that we missed that news release, what did it look like? What was the average move? What was the average response? Oh, it was 30, you know, 30 points off of that one? That's awesome to know. Bam, the news release just missed. Hey, listen, the last time this scenario happened the same exact way, we had $30 worth of movement. It looks like, again, we take in a little conservative. Let's plan on 25. Is there something I can put on there for the market to react in the next two hours to apply a call spread? You guys see how there's multiple factors with this, the more experience you get with it? Okay, last but not least, let's go over and cover the knockouts. Knockouts are like kind of taking over the world at this point. Um, knockouts, knockouts everywhere, right? One of the biggest benefits of knockouts is the longer duration contract, okay? It doesn't expire, so we don't have to focus on time as much. It's more of a focus on price, because again, what happens? If price moves too far in one direction, bam, you're knocked out with profit. Moves too far in the other direction, bam, you take a full loss, okay? You really need to focus on your risk to reward versus or they're letting it knock you out, or is it gonna hit that, fine, that Friday expiration? Because it does eventually have an expiration time it's just longer in the week. Okay, so focus on what day. Are we on Sunday? Great, I have lots of time. Is it Friday? Mm, maybe I should treat this more like a call spread or a binary because I have one day left. Also, biggest thing you need to focus on is news retracements. Nothing worse than having go exactly, you're like, oh my God, the market's down huge today. I should make money today. I should have made money today. And then you're looking, you took a loss because you got whipped at the top side. Again, understand what those kind of um, those whips look like. How big will a whip typically be? And again, you know, people say, oh, the market's running stops. Great. Know what the average stop, quote, stop run looks like. That's not what the market actually does, but that's what people like to blame on, you know, when they put their positions in, in, bad, in bad places. Know what that looks like on an ATR basis, okay? And again, there are contract specifications. On a weekly basis, these contracts are printed, right? They are, their range is 50. Well, if I know in a specific time period, 
after a big move, I know that it can move this far before it hits again, maybe another opposing level or another news release. I know that it can move 75. That may not be a bad position to take. And again, it's it's you got to weigh all the options out there, right? You got to weigh binaries, call spreads, anything else, okay? Um, I will say using ATR, one of the biggest things, again, with each of the pairs, knockouts is the one that I focus on the ATRs the most. Because they have that longer duration and I'm not as worried about the expiration value, I am worried about what's going to happen next. Is it going to hit its full profit? Does it have the power to meet that before or that the market closes or another news release happens? That's a big thing. And again, risk to reward wise, it has to make sense. Proximity to kind of um, on, on the on the uh, risk side is also extremely important with knockouts. Um, what I would do at this point, guys, is I would encourage you all to go over. And again, maybe after today or maybe in the next 15 minutes when you're taking your break, go to the Nadex homepage, go to the market tab, click on whatever your favorite is, stock indices, um, Forex, commodities, go to the bottom, bottom of the page and start looking at contract specifications. And ask the guys, you know, these guys are going to be talking about different strategies later. You know, pull it up on your own charts, throw ATR up there and look and say, hey, listen, the average daily ATR is X matched off the contract specifications. It looks like on an average day, it moves five binaries. It moves four binaries. It moves two call spreads. It moves how many knockouts? That level of education, that level of specification will only help you pick better targets going forward. Okay. So hopefully you guys were able to get something from that. Again, maybe this is just planting the seed for you guys to go even further. Um, you guys are more than welcome to join me on Tuesday afternoons from 12 to 1. I do cover what the ATR is and talk about if the markets are moving, not moving, and kind of, you know, a lot of times I will look to see if there's any potential setups later in the week and, and talking about that. So I do incorporate in the charts if you guys ever want to see me doing that. So with that being said, thank you so much for attending today's presentation. And thank you again for you know, having me for the last three days, I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys, if you want to check the website out, go ahead. Any questions, I'm sure there will probably be a few questions today that people have. You're more than welcome to email me at support at keep Um, I think I think a lot of people have gotten their questions answered. I'm looking up top. Um, I see a lot of check marks. So look, you know, if anybody has any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. If not, uh, Todd can take it back over and uh, you guys are, you know, you guys can get to a break before your final two sessions. Brian, that was Absolutely awesome. As always, thank you so much, sir. Uh, again, Brian Caprice, Keep Trading Simple, a great partner of ours, uh, always with great content. So uh, thank you, Brian, for that. Uh, everyone else, uh, I'm actually going to take over control real quickly uh, before we take a break. What do I want to show? Let's and, and Todd, see. can I answer one question? There's one question down there at oh, the sure. very, very bottom that I'd like to answer. Somebody asked about what the advantages of knockouts are. Um, I just wanted to kind of leave people with this. Um, guys, one of the biggest advantages for knockouts, and I know they're about to cover this in the next section right now, is the proximity to price. Because new knockouts are printed all day long as price moves, it's so in touch and it literally, it's, it's like having contracts with their finger on the pulse of the market. It's the biggest benefit to knockouts. I, it's it's my favorite part about it is we're always so close to a, a ceiling or a floor. So that that's what I would say my biggest advantage in knockouts are. Good I'm answer. Good. You can have it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. We are going to take a, a brief break here. We'll come back at the top of the hour. Another great partner of ours, Rockwell Trading, to go through a a cool knockout option strategy. So uh, please, we'll. Join us back at the top of the hour. We're going to take a quick 12-minute break.